<laughs> Welcome to Friday, everybody. It is Penny and Kim and lighting up your Fridays with the five stars of strengthening families. And this week we are starting a new series, which is going to be communication, which is the social and emotional competence of children. And but before we start that, we're going to do our check in and Penny, I think, is going to do that for us. Right, so welcome everyone. Um, like Kim said, we're going to be talking about communication and how our communication with our children or the people we care for, relationships period, but specifically with children, how we communicate with them can enhance their um, social and emotional um, language, right? So um, how we help them develop some of those uh, executive function skills. So checking in from last week, last week we talked about the difference between discipline and punishment. Um, sort of the core idea being that uh, discipline is about teaching and maintaining um, the relationship, whereas punishment uh, is considered more punitive and is, can be quite damaging to the relationship. So we asked you to just, again, be the detective and have a look at how things were going with you in that regard. Um, had you thought about those differences before? Um, you know, and how does that play out in your house? And, and are you comfortable with where that's sitting? And, or maybe you found some ways that you could tweak that. Yeah, so hopefully you had um, um, some fun <laughs> with that, <laughs> or spent some time with that. Uh, yeah, and communication. So this is a huge area. So Kim and I have kind of decided that we might do, normally we would do four uh, episodes, four recordings for each star. This star is quite a big star and it has um, a far reaching impact on our little people. And for success in their lifetime, these are some really crucial skills that they need uh, to, to learn from you, their caregivers. So we're gonna dedicate a little bit more time, a few more episodes to this. So we'll be looking at um, six, possibly eight episodes. So today we're gonna start off with the question, so, apart from talking, how do you know what your child is feeling? Aha. Aha. Uh -huh. so do I get to go first, Penny? You get to go first. Take it away. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, I guess the first thing that comes up for me when um, with the question is asked is, is, is by looking at the body language. Because so often our actions speak louder than our words. And that's what comes up for me is, is when we're seeing um, emotions such as frustration, those kind of things, it, it is, it's kind of looking beneath that, right? What, what, is, what is beneath that? And oftentimes it's, it's fear or uncertainty or embarrassment or anxiety. There's a, there's a whole host of, of, of things that, that it could be. So, um, and sometimes even just um, watching the things that they're interested in, you know, like, um, are they drawn to, um, I, I guess this is more for a teenager, I guess is kind of what I'm thinking of. Are they drawn to, to sad movies or to, or to sad books or, you know, those kind of things can give some indications too on kind of where they're at um, emotionally. So that's what comes up for me, Penny. Um, when, when the question is asked, are those some of this, do you have some of similarities or, or what, what, it, what comes up for you when that question is asked about, apart from talking, how do you know what your child is feeling? So what came into my head when you were talking about, you know, what's below was the anger iceberg, right? So, um, right. on the top, you have this anger frustration piece and then under the surface, is, is where most of the ice is and that's where those embarrassment, fear, shame, all of those things. Um, and I've heard it coined that anger is a secondary emotion. I don't know, but that's what I think of when I think of secondary is that what's driving the, the anger and the frustration. That's what's below the surface. So that's excellent, excellent analogy. Um, when I first read this question, I first thought I had was behavior communicates something. 
So behind every behavior, there is something going on. So there's either a lack of a skill or there's an unmet need or there's a big feeling that needs to come out. So for me, as a parent, again, detective hat or perspectacles or whatever you want to call them, changing the narrative, there's all kinds of words around it, is moving past what my eyes are seeing and sort of seeing more with my heart, right? Like, okay, this little person is having a hard time. What's going on? Um, and, you know, my children are a little older, so even conveying that to them, wow, you know, I know that normally... That's not how we talk to each other. So I know something must be bothering. You know, was there something happened at school? You know, because yeah, kids don't don't behave just to misbehave. They're not out to get you. They're not pushing your buttons. Well, they might be pushing your buttons, but they're not intending to push your buttons, right? Right. They love you and they want to be connected to you. And so that behavior, and usually the more big extreme the behavior is the bigger the feeling or need behind that behavior. so that's what really comes up for me is being able to take a breath and step back and say okay what's really going on yeah I, I love that penny too and, and I think you know what what was it that happened at school or what but the thing is I don't think that they'll even really know like if we were to you know ask them what you know what this this isn't about spilled milk this has got to be about more I I don't I don't think that they know so they're sort of you know dysregulated and possibly in in that and I think that the 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 it's just mostly for us from what I, what I heard you say is for us to understand that it's really not about the spilled milk or it's really not about not getting the red cup or it's really about something else um so to, and for us to understand that, that's the, the first step, I guess, is the insight that we realize that there, that this behave, and you also said um, behavior is communication. I heard you say that as well. And so understanding that this is, what are they communicating? Starting to ask ourselves that. And that's, I think, the first step in this. So, yeah. Yeah. And and then I guess depending on the age that you're talking about. So my experience is sort of preteen, um, where where my oldest is starting to be able to sort of like when she gets into that sort of you know eye rolling snippy kind of stuff, and I'm able to not take it personally and kind of go, oh, yeah. She might not be able to put her finger on it right away, but when I can connect with her that way and give her a reason to look at it, then she kind of can go, well, no, nothing really happened at school today. Um, you know what, I'm just really tired. I, I didn't sleep well last night. And, and, and again, you know, it's not, a, it's not an excuse, but when she gets through all of that and we can, I can listen to her, it usually ends up with, oh yeah, you know what, I'm sorry, right? Like she, she recognizes that. So it might feel like you're excusing the behavior, but you're really not. You're just teaching them to trace it back and they can make those connections. And then hopefully the goal is as an adult with their own little people, if that's what they choose, they'll have that ability to go, whoa, I am triggered here. And it's got nothing to do with them. You know, that's the process. But for little people, you're so right. They're not going to be able to say, well, at daycare today, Johnny took the truck I wanted and that made me frustrated, right? They'll be just like, nah, I don't want that, you know, like, and so you have to kind of be like, you're just feeling this. Is it this? Is it that? You no, know, let it out. Let them, you know, we don't even have to name it. We can just, you know, yeah. 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 And we can just make it about the, about not getting the red cup because I think so often, you know, we don't know, you know, what um, we don't actually maybe even need to know what the root of it is. We just need to know it's not about the red cup, but if we make it about the red cup, then we give them practice and working through, if we help him go through their upset feelings about not getting the red cup we give them practice in working through that difficult emotion without having to go deeper and and maybe to a more wounding environment where someplace they can't actually go because that was really wounding 
you know, to get picked on it at school or, or not feel uh, significant in the teacher's eyes or who knows, right? It, it could be too wounding to go there. So just staying with the, yeah, you know what? I, that's, not, that's not how you wanted that to work. You did want the red cup, I get it. Mm -hmm. But like you say, not condoning, you're not condoning the behavior or letting them get away with it. You're just saying you, you understand. And I, I think the key here is, is realizing it's, it's, it's not about the little things, but that's just the perfect place to play out and help them learn how to, how to handle those, those situations and feelings with something that's not as vulnerable, like a red cup. Yes, and I love that. And, and that also uh, shows light or something that came into my head was, so then when we try to appease them, it actually has the opposite effect. Because I hear parents say this, right? So I give him the red cup, and he, then he freaks out because whatever, right? Then it's like, it doesn't help. And it's like, yeah, That's right. it doesn't help. Because like you're saying, it's not about the red cup. He can't articulate to you what it's really about. So helping him find his tears and get all the way through that sort of go from anger, frustration to disappointment, sadness, letting it all play out. And yeah, it takes time and patience. And the result is, is beautiful, right? That's yeah. Great. This is the core work you're doing to build those social and emotional competencies in your kids. Yeah, and what I wrote down here is the word, the word is to, to be understood because when you when you give them the red cup and they were, you know, they're, you're conveying that you, you're not understanding. That's why it doesn't work. So that's why, and they don't even know that. They just know, no, no, I don't want it. You know, like it, it's because it, it conveyed to them that you're not hearing, you're not listening, you're not understanding. And so that's why if you just go with the sadness about not getting the red cup, it works. It works. Whereas if you give them the red cup, then it, it'll just, it won't. So that's, that's a really good point. That's a good, great perspective because I never thought of that before that, yeah, that it, even though they don't understand it's not about the red cup, part of them doesn't feel heard if you just say, well, fine, here's the red cup. That's right. And that's it's logical, which is children are illogical. I saw this speaker speak about this and she, like as, as grown-ups, we expect them to be logical and they're not. And, and, and they're not doing it on purpose. That's just not how their brains work yet. And so when you can let go of it making sense, you might have a hope in being able to keep yourself together enough to work them through it. Because when you can let go of, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I think not only children are not logical, I think we as anybody with the limbic system, because if you think about it, you know, you wanted the, the you know, this, and then your friend or your husband or spouse or significant other gives it to you. And then you're like, no, that's not what I wanted. You know, it's the same thing. We, we can't make sense of it because it's, it's, it's too vulnerable. So that's why we, we have this upset over a broken nail or a broken pencil or, you know, it, it happens to all of us. So I think that's a really good point that it's not logical. Well, it's because we can't see it. It's, it's too vulnerable. So we can see the broken nail or the red cup that we didn't get, you know, we just need somebody to help us through that. We all do, even us as adults. In my family, my older sister and I is our joke, right? Like if we fall on the birthdays, I'll be like, so did you get a pony? Because <laughs> it's become a joke because, you know, it's like growing up, it's this idea of this perfect birthday when yeah. you get a pony. But it's not really about the pony. It's about some sort of sense of feeling of what a birthday should be like. And that constant right. sense of disappointment because it should be something, but we don't really know what it should be. But so that's the reason we've likened it to a pony. So did you get a pony? No, no pony this year. That's yeah. exactly true. It's the same for adults. Sometimes we just have these desires or, and we don't even know what they are. And we expect other people to know and to fulfill them and that's a whole other ca cafe yeah we could go on about this for a long time i think <laughs> so yes drawing back to the original question and how how do you know what your child is feeling and i'll tell you right now people watching you will be the one to know this about your child better than anybody else you're you're going to be the best person to do this detective work so we're going to challenge you this week or invite you to, again, put on your detective hat and 
really try to start thinking and looking at what might be going on for your child, whether they're a toddler, whether they're a tween, whether they're a teenager or a grown adult. Maybe you're a caregiver caring for aging parents, right? It's, it's true for humans that we don't always know what's going on inside of ourselves. Yeah. And so you can be that person who can do a little bit of detective work and at the very least say, I know something's going on and I'm here. You don't have to have the answer and you don't have to fix it. You just be the witness kind of and be there for them to work, work, work through it. Yeah. So that's our invitation this week. Yeah. So okay. part one, check. And we will see you back here next Friday for the second um, episode in communication. Thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. See you.